I think it's become apparent to me and pretty much everyone where Disney is at as a business brand right now, considering the most recent events that have been happening, not just with what happened on social media yesterday, but pretty much what Disney's been doing for the past couple years. As you read the title, this brand video is mostly going to be about why Star Cruiser basically bombed as a Disney concept. But I just wanted to get out of the way that, um, basically after what just happened here, I know we keep making jokes of like, oh, Disney has all the money in the world. Why is it they can't make such good products? I think we're kind of starting to realize that Disney might not be the financial juggernaut that we always claimed it, it is. Like, believe it or not, like, they probably still have money somewhere, but whatever money they do have, they are not using it wisely or in the right place. I could make an entire giant rant about Disney's latest decision to um, basically make the live-action Moana movie, despite the movie not being 10 years old yet. Then I decided... That could be a whole other um, retrospective video in its own right. So that wasn't what I wanted to jump into. But the very moment I heard yesterday that it was confirmed that the Disney's Galactic Star Cruiser experience, a.k.a. the um, Star Wars ho two-day hotel that sits behind Hollywood Studios in the um, Star Wars part of the park, was going to close this September... Not only was I internally cheering, but I basically saw this disaster coming from a million miles away. And I can literally name you a lot of the things wrong on two hands. But the basic point of why the Galactic Star Cruiser has now become the shortest lived hotel experience and I call it an experience because, seriously, if you're forced to stay there for two days, it's not really a hotel. It's like you're going camping on a school field trip or something. A glorified school field trip camping experience that literally costs $5,000 for two people and for a larger family, $7,000. And if you have like a giant party, I do not want to know what that cost would have been. And personally, I don't care to look that up because, the again, the pr the price is, the lowest price of the hotel already made me gag the first time I heard the hotel going to be open about over a year ago. So speaking of that, when Disney initially first opened this experience, of course, as probably everyone in the Disney community or even online community knows. All of the famous YouTubers, Disney bloggers, were flocking to the opening of the hotel. And that's not a surprise, because what Disney loves doing, they love to recruit the most famous YouTubers, bloggers, Instagrammers, TikTokers, or whatever, and basically give them a free two-day, two-night stay at this new experience as basically free publicity to announce to the public that this is the new experience that they should be experiencing. Lo a lot of places do this. Like, if Universal were to open a new hotel, when Disney did open the new cruise boat, they did the same thing. I have nothing against that. Because it's marketing. It's actually, pretty, actually a pretty smart um, strategy to do. What I do have against... I am already getting so mad... Like, I'm trying my best not to get too angry on these videos because I know I'm just gonna ramble about absolutely nothing for the next half hour. But with this experience overall, again, like I said, for two people, for two nights, the bottom line cost is $5,000. And the only thing that's included in this experience is the food because people gotta eat to survive. If you want the drink package, 
that's a completely separate purchase. It's probably, and the drinks, it's Disney. They probably cost $20, $20 a glass of, of something alcoholic. So not only did you just waste $5,000 on getting a room in the first place, now you have to spend extra money to basically um, relieve your stress away. And then if you want like pictures from like professional photographers, like, you know, when you go into the park, like, or when you have um, the Disney app, it costs extra to do the photo pass thing to get rid of the watermarks and stuff. But people don't really do that anyway. They just screenshot the watermark photos and post them on Facebook because literally no one's paying for that. Or they just take their own pictures. So you would think that for the $5,000, $7,000 experience with you, your friend, your friend, your partner, or even your family in regards to that, you would think that, oh, you have very nice pictures. You just paid um $7,000 that the pictures would be included in that. No, you have to pay those pictures yourself unless you want to take the photos yourself, which most people would end up doing anyway because... Who the hell wants to pay for photos when you already spent a stupid amount of money just to get into the hotel? And I'm pretty sure, and I think, I don't know if the, um, because I know when you go through the Galactic Star Cruiser experience that you do go walk into Hollywood Studios to, um, go to the Star Wars land. I actually have no idea if, um, the whole, like, you know, the make your own lightsaber thing that probably costs a lot of money. I'm not sure if that's also included, but if it's not included, you just wasted another like hundreds of dollars on wall decorations, which angers people even further. The actual experience itself is not what makes me mad about this because you're probably wondering, Kate, did you ever experience this yourself? No, because I'm not stupid enough to pay $5,000 for two nights, that's why. And that leads to the other question. For the influencers, the YouTubers, the bloggers who actually went there for the free two nights when it initially opened, let me ask you, or you probably won't see this, but whatever. Let me ask you, how many times did you actually go back to the experience and did you actually spend the $5,000 or the whatever it is that you wanted to do if you liked it the first time? I'm saying if because I don't know. And then here's the next question. For the people who actually spent money on their first or possibly only trip to the Galactic Star Cruiser, how many times did you return afterwards and how much more money did you spend? The possible results, if my assumptions are correct, are very slim. Because what baffled me the most about the Star Cruiser experience overall is that Disney had the audacity to open this LARPing hotel experience during one of the worst economic, like, downfalls that the not only the country, but basically the whole world had, had been experiencing. So, um, if- so I had to look this up real quick. The Galactic Star Cruiser initially opened in March of 2022. People were still recovering from the disaster that was the COVID pandemic, the pandemic that actually cost people not only their livelihoods forcing to stay in their houses for the next two years, but it cost most people, at least in America, their jobs. Like when people were literally still recovering by trying to find a new job or at least trying to find money to pay the rent, pay the electricity bill, put food on the table for themselves and their family, the one thing Disney decides that would be the best idea is to open an experience where literally for when they try to advertise the families, like, oh my God, the, t the trailer itself for the hotel was really bad because first it's, it starts saying, oh, this is for like Star Wars fans, but it also like had children in the video, assuming that it's trying to appeal to families. Like, what modern or average middle-class family is going to spend over $7,000 on a hotel for two days and then expects to, if they're, like, staying for a week, for example, because that's the common, like, time where people actually spend in Florida or at least in the Orlando area in the first place, I would know. Why, like, you really expect them to pay 
$7,000 for two days, and then automatically ha already have, like, the, the rest of the week booked at, like, some other cheaper hotel. Like, people are already spending stupid amounts of money on Disney in the first place, but the last thing a common family is going to expect is to pay the same amount of money that they would to take a week on a Royal Caribbean cruise boat. Or even a Disney cruise. Any type of nice cruise. They are not going to spend a cruise vacation or a Hawaii vacation amount of money for two days at a what's basically a cosplay convention. So the fact that Disney thought it'll be a good idea while everyone's recovering health-wise and financial-wise and probably mental health-wise during one of the worst pandemics of modern day that they would open this, like, nerd fest of a hotel where, oh yes, it appeals to the Star Wars nerds, and I know there are a ton of Star Wars people out there, so this could have worked if, for one, it was open to people basically staying there for as long as they want, and two, if it costs less to stay there. Because I have a lot of friends who are Star Wars nerds, and I think they would have enjoyed the experience had it not been released under the circumstances that Disney did. It's like, yes, that Disney wants the Star Wars fandom to come to the hotel, but at the same time, they're charging like one percenter of a citizen population prices for you to stay there. For food that's probably not that great, drinks that are probably not that great, and based on people who actually did go there, you will most likely not meet any of the original Star Wars characters from the franchise. Heck, not even like characters from like the newer movies. The cast, the, the cast members in costume that you would meet around there are basically characters that Disney made up for a um, Wattpad fan fiction. It's that embarrassing. Like you can't even get photo opportunities with any of the original characters. Like what sense does that make to a Star Wars fan? Like a Star Wars fan, is not interested in creating a new character just to live a Star Wars fantasy. When they hear Star Wars Experience Hotel, they they want like attractions where they're going to see the movie characters, like maybe perform scenes, like they maybe want to see Darth Vader, or if they're fans of the newer movies, they want to see um, Kylo Ren, like they want to see um, Finn, they want to see Poe, they want to see Rey, they want to see the actual characters from the movie franchise. They don't want to basically um, play a role-playing game on a computer in real life. That's not how it works. And if they did want to do that, there are probably conventions in the big cities like New York or Los Angeles that cost a hundred times cheaper to attend for a weekend <laughs> just a weekend alone, then this hotel tried to scam their customers into spending. Again, when I heard that um, Disney had officially decided to close the hotel in September, again, I saw it coming. And I saw it coming when Disney was also basically on their hands and knees trying to get customers to buy the brooms. Because they noticed their other hotels were being booked and full every night. But as soon as like, um the hype of the hotel started going down the like disney had admitted that most of the time their hotel their star wars hotel empty almost empty and for a, a and for a two billion dollar project apparently that's the amount that i've learned about all this it cost two million dollars to build or two sorry not two million two billion dollars to build that's not good like, they literally were begging their cast members to stay by giving them a 30% discount, which honestly does not make a dent into the price at all. They tried to beg Disney Vacation Club members for, with a discount if they purchased another um, Disney room to stay in for the rest of the week. They also tried to convince um, annual pass members to stay. And guess what? That did not work. Because even with the discounts that they would try to offer, that does not um, make it better that people would spend a stupid amount of money 
on a hotel that the majority of Disney fans admittedly don't even care about. Like, I look, I love Disney stuff, but the moment they bought Star Wars, I had clocked out. Like, it's not that I think Star Wars is bad or anything. It's just, I really didn't care. Like, yeah, I watched the original Star Wars movies when I was a kid, but that did, did that change my life? No. To close off this whole video, because I hate for this to go on for another 20 minutes, Disney is in a position where I think they legit don't understand who their audience is and what type of experiences they want to give us. This applies to basically trying to monopolize the entire film industry. This applies to um, the live action movies that basically been flopping one after the other. And with um, Little Mermaid, I think it's coming out next week. I could be extremely wrong because that's how much I really don't care. That's also gonna be bad. Like people might go because according to everyone who's listened to the soundtrack already because Disney decided to drop it in anticipation for the movie, Halle Bailey's voice is perfection. And well, maybe that's because Disney finally got the idea that they should actually hire a proper singer to portray the Disney princess who's gonna be mostly singing the entire time. Which finally, at least it's somewhat of an improvement to <coughs> Beauty and the Beast. But even with that said, like from the trailers that they've released, I'm sorry, the CGI and the water effects look absolutely horrendous. Like, they just perfected what water looked like when they made the animated version of Moana. The fact that they couldn't do it for a live action movie horrifies me because, again, with possible money problems that Disney's having, like, I'm not going to assume, like, what it is because I don't work for the company, at least not anymore anyway. Okay, now before you start asking questions, yes, I used to be a cast member, but it was at the Magic Kingdom only for a summer. I don't know anything about the movie business side of things or even like the entire company's administrative side of things. So I don't want questions like that going into my comments or my DMs. But anyway, whatever problems Disney's having, they are very desperate to keep this company afloat because they had also just canceled the initiative of moving their California cast members to Florida. I, assuming that's because literally almost every California cast member was quitting because they don't want to move, which is within their right, by the way. Like, I'm not going to say like, oh, they should, they should not be complaining because Disney's like a good company and all that because that's a whole different other conversation that I won't be going into. But yeah, when a lot of people are quitting or basically expressing how unhappy with this change, they just canceled that. And now one of their most expensive hotel properties closed down. And there is no information as of now what they're gonna do with the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. A lot of people were actually saying like, oh, can we just turn it into a regular hotel? Like actually make it like um, hospitable for like seven days a week stays. To which my sister actually proved a point and I had almost completely forgot about this actually. The Galactic Star Cruiser is not in your typical, um, area of which people could park their car and stay at. Because originally, how you would go to the Star Wars Hotel is that you have to park your car at a specific, I think, parking garage or something in Disney Springs. And there is a separate bus or shuttle that would actually take you to the Galactic Star Cruiser because the purpose of the experience to begin with is that you're leaving Disney property and you're going to a location in the Star Wars universe where this Galactic Star Cruiser is parked. That So the whole point is that the Star Cruiser Hotel is hidden. And where it's at, the Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel, is actually in the behind-the-scenes area of Hollywood Studios, enclosed in a separate area of the backstage of Hollywood Studios. That's why, like... It's an easy way to get from the Galactic Star Cruiser into the Star Wars land in Hollywood Studios. That's why it's that so easy to get, to get in. So with that being said, if they were to make it into an actual hotel where guests can go in and go out whenever they want, there's no parking near that area because they did not build parking near that hotel. 
Like, people would actually still have to park at Disney Springs, and now with now being um, inclusive, that's going to be a problem because now you have a whole million cars parked at Disney Springs, not going to um, the shopping center, but to hop on a bus and then go to the Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel. And that, mean, that means um, in order to use the car to go somewhere else, they would have to go back on that bus to Disney Springs, and people don't want to have to suffer with that. So the hotel thing could work on paper, but considering where it's at right now, that's most likely not going to be a possibility. I fear that with the Galactic Star Cruiser building, what they might do with it is just basically use it as a storage unit. Because otherwise, because it's in the backstage, what my sister suggested is that they could actually put a new kind of Star Wars ride back there. I personally have no idea what, because as fun as creating a new ride can be, I don't care about Star Wars enough to actually start thinking about that, so that's not what I'm gonna spend the rest of the video doing. But yeah, in short, Galactic Star Cruiser was a disaster from the word go. I even had friends who transferred from their old positions in the, in the Disney World Park to get a job at the Star Cruiser because they were promised that with this success of this hotel that they would get very good tips, they would get very good work, they would get pretty much very good anything. But what I learned from a friend on Facebook after the announcement was made, like, I wasn't sure if there was any NDA in discussing this, but I'm assuming he was free to talk about it. And I'm not going to mention his names or all that. But they said, like, they... They knew straight from the word go that this resort was a bad idea because leadership had no idea what they were doing. He even argued that the prices were way too high. There was not enough um, immersion with the hotel. And when the arrival of the influencers and the YouTubers showed up for the, for the opening, like guests treated the cast member staff like absolute garbage in compared to their entitled behinds. And again, as a former cast member myself, reading that was disturbing. And the fact that cast members were still not getting paid enough for that disaster of a mess definitely proved to me that superiority or the superior team did not care as uh, that was until Galactic Star Cruiser became a sinking ship. And that's when they started caring. And again, like, basically, the Galactic Star Cruiser incident is the representation of where Disney is at right now. They are a sinking ship, and all they're doing is basically getting buckets from the janitor's closet and trying to pour all the water out back into the ocean when more of the ocean is seeping right in. Okay, so in conclusion, yeah, we knew this was a disaster. But at the end of the day, we also don't know what other disasters are coming. Some of them we might do, others we don't, and at this point, Disney is really in deep waters, and it's going to take a lot, and I mean a lot, to get them out of it. I don't know if Bob Iger is going to fix things so far, it's not looking too great, because he's basically fixing the mess that he and Bob Chapek made, oh, both at once, and when you have both bad children making a mess and one of the per and one of them has to do the cleanup. Yeah, it goes just as well as you think it does. So, what's the future for Disney at this point? Who knows. It this is basically a very bad baseball game that has yet to be watched. So, that's pretty much it. Pretty much my thoughts. I'm Kate Sheridan. It's been real and I hope you guys have a pretty good day.